There are only a few places in the world that stir my heart with a wild passion. Ancash, Peru is one of them. Here, in central Peru, are the jewel of the Andes, the Cordillera Blancas and the Cordillera Huaywash, two pockets of mountains that sandwich Huaraz, the capital city of Ancash. Ancash is full of natural beauty. The lakes practically glow emerald green. Birds make their habitats in the unique high altitude ponds. And below the blue ice of the glaciers, the lush green of the fertile valleys and mountainsides paint a picture of an idyllic lifestyle. Simply put, Peru is one of the most beautiful countries on the planet. And the Cordillera Huaywash is Peru's most dramatic mountains. This is why I've traveled to South America, to trek Peru's marvelous Cordillera Huaywash. I have just arrived in the city of Juaraz here in Peru. Now, Juaraz is a very special place to me. I spent a lot of time in this city when I did a big solo trek through South America. And also, Juaraz is one of the main adventure hubs for all of Peru. Anybody who's a climber or a trekker has definitely come through Juaraz in order to do some of the most fantastic treks in the whole world that are based right outside of the city. So over the next couple of days, I'm gonna be settling in here to Juaraz, and then I'm going on a big trek in one of the dream places for me, the Cordillera Huaywash. It's gonna be a big adventure ahead. All right, let's go explore the city. The city itself is relatively small in terms of the square footage, but they pack a lot of people in. There's over 100,000 people that live in Juaraz, and it is a bustling town. It's got traffic everywhere. You've got people working on the streets. You've got markets. People are trying to sell stuff. It's got its own vibe that is very unique to Juaraz, and I actually really like it here. I just saw a really amazing looking pile of strawberries uh, right over here at this marketplace. So I'm gonna get some because they look delicious. Bueno, muchas gracias. How's that? Seven years ago, Cafe Andino was the place that I hung out at all the time. And it's where I did all of my planning for the treks that I was going on. So it only felt appropriate to be meeting up with Virgilio at Cafe Andino to talk about going on the Huaywash trek. Hello. Hey, how are you? So good to finally be here in Huaraz. Mm, good. Yeah. Ready to go to the mountains, huh? I am very ready. What are we gonna be doing for the next few days, uh, next week or so? We leave the day after tomorrow and then we drive into the south for five hours to Chiquian. Peru is this interesting place where it has this blend of really rural feel and also bustling city life. And so just outside of Huaraz is this spectacular landscape, but the only way to get there is on this really rough road that just climbs and winds its way up these spectacular mountains. So Virgilio and I, we set off from Huaraz to go up to Yanganuco and some of the surrounding passes that are back tucked into the mountains that are spectacular in order to get my first acclimatization hike. Today's objective for Virgilio and I is to acclimatize. Well, he's already well acclimatized, but for me as an outsider coming in to do a huge trek like the Huaywash, Wash, it's super important that I actually get my body adjusted to being at, oh, 15,000 feet up here. So we are in Huascara National Park, one of the super impressive places in the Cordillera Blancas just outside of Juaraz. And we're getting in a good hike uh, to just start getting me to breathe and be more used to what's coming ahead for the next few days. Huascaran is the tallest peak in Peru at over 22,000 feet. It is a beast, and I love standing in its presence. It is so cool. I used to do about two or three months worth of living out here as I trekked in this area. So it feels very special to be back in Huascaran National Park. And this is one of the most spectacular mountain ranges in the whole world. I truly love it. And anybody who's been a climber or a trekker might know about this area. So I'm getting in my acclimatization. Feels good to be back. Hopefully I'm ready for the Cordillera Huaywash. Whew, it's gonna be a big one. Today's the day, Virgilio and I are setting off. We got the crew behind us, they're packing up camp. And uh, today we're heading off way up over that pass that's behind me. So it's gonna be a huge day a lot of elevation gain, and then a big descent down the other side of the pass as well. So the sun is just now hitting us, and it's time to go.
Virgilio, where are we going? We go to a pass which is called Zambunya. You see the black mountain yeah. in the middle? Uh -huh. Yeah, the pass is to the right side. Okay. Woo! Doing a trek like this, we have the team kind of spreads out a little bit. So we have Gregorio Chileno, uh, who's behind me here, and he's our master chef and our cook. Behind him is Rosalino, he's our arriero. And in Peru, arrieros are very important for any trekking expedition because they are the horse masters and donkey masters. He'll be ready for us when we get into camp on the other side of the pass. So we begin our ascent and it is knee pounding killer. It is hard work, but every step of the way we have this beautiful mountain that's behind us that's just drawing us further in, into the mountains. We're making some big progress, but uh, boy, am I feeling it. Honestly, just in the last 300 feet or so, I started to really feel the altitude start to pile up on me. This is hard. This is quite a big challenge out here. Oh, Virgilio. Yeah. Oh. We did it. No, Eric, sorry. This is not the pass. What? We are near the pass. The pass is over there. What? 15 more minutes. Oh, you said that 15 minutes ago. I'm tired. I feel a little deceived. I thought we'd made it. Turns out there's another pass. This is a false pass. Miles to go before we sleep. So at long last, Virgilio and I approach the pass and I cannot believe the landscape that stands before me. The whole mountains just open up. I have a whole new view of an entirely different set of the mountains. And perhaps most impressively is this jewel, this emerald jewel of a lake that is at the base of this glacier and these spectacular mountain ranges. Okay, I think this is the most blue lake I've ever seen. But how does that even happen? Because I've seen lots of lakes and only one like this. Really depend on the sediments of the mountains. Yeah. Which goes to the lake. Okay. What kind of the sediments there are, you know? And also, uh, it's very important to know how deep is the lake to have a good color. Yeah. And also, it's very important, the sun. Ah, okay. Hmm? There's not a lot of places in the world that just knock me over with how beautiful they are. But right here, I am astounded. This lake is so, so blue and beautiful, and the mountains that are behind us I don't know if I've ever seen a more beautiful pairing, and I'm honestly just, I'm, I'm feeling speechless here. I'm trying to put into words how I feel, but uh, this is a powerful experience being here. This landscape is unlike any place I've ever been. As we're hiking through and having lunch and just being up in the mountains, about every 30 minutes or so, I would hear this rumble and, you know, just wondering what it is. But as we descend down, I see the very first of many avalanches just pouring off of the rock face. Well, if that didn't just give you a sense of awe and wonder and respect for the mountains, I don't know what will. That was a huge avalanche that just came down. Holy moly. It's been an incredible day. It's been a hard day. Um, I can't complain about this being a day of work, but it's definitely been a challenge. It's put me to the test coming up and over that pass. We're on the home stretch. I can see where Rosalino has set up camp for the night, and I am very excited. So onwards we must press. Okay, when I was still 100 yards away from camp, I started smelling something amazing. So I wanna go in here and see what the cook has got going on. Chileno here, he has been preparing some of the finest food that I've ever eaten. It's kinda how it works around here. We have a delicious soup that's like our starter. That is the first dish, and now he's got, a, basically as a flank steak going on as a second course. And then of course, there's also gonna be a dessert thrown in there. So uh, you can say I'm living pretty good out here in Peru. 